Hi, Whitney. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. That's fine. That's uh, that's one o'clock. So, do you just want to sort of give out any housekeeping rules or uh, how how this will work? Um, so, our presentation today, eliminating um, downtime, corrosion control for operational um, pipe work. Um, what we'll do is, um, if you can, um, either add your questions to the chat function. Um, and Stuart can take those either as they come in or towards the end. And if you have some questions along the way and feel like you want to wait for those, um, we'll have time at the end for Q&A. But if you have any other questions, you can just you can drop your questions in the chat or you can wait till the end. So both is fine. OK, Whitney, thanks very much for that. Uh... Yeah, so I'll just kick off. This is the second in our short series of Tech sort of Byte webinars that we're running this week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, for us in the UK, it's over lunchtime, so it's it's, it's handy to uh, lunch and learn, as we call it over here. So today, what we're going to look at is the advantages of stopback uh, and application to pipe work. Uh, the majority of applications that we do with Stopak uh, is on pipe. All, all variations of pipe, uh, including low temperature, hot temperature, uh, risers and conductors offshore, buried pipe, etc. So I'll be covering some of these applications today. Uh, also, with uh, when I speak about pipe work, tubular steel, tubular structural steel as well, protection of that is very similar in the way we use Stopak for, for that type of application. Uh, so without any further ado, Wendy, can you give me the next slide, please? OK. So what we want to try and the point across today is that Stopak, compared to traditional surface preparation and traditional coatings, is a system that will save the contractor and ultimately the asset owner a lot of time and money. And I'll just run through some of the points why that is the case. With Stopak, we talk about minimum surface preparation. When I say minimum surface preparation, what I mean is uh, ST2 is the standard, which is basically a wire brush cleaned down with isopropanol, a rag just to ensure there's no contamination on the surface of the steel prior to the application of the Stopak. Uh, there has been a, a move towards eliminating mechanical cleaning of pipework and structural steel uh, just because of the environmental impact and also the, the waste and the intrusion to other operations that are going on when blasting is taking place. So we're seeing our, our clients certainly looking at cleaner, safer ways to prep steel work. Uh, so that's what I talk about when I, I'm talking about minimum surface prep. We are also seeing that there is a, a growing requirement to what we would call sweat the asset to ensure that the asset uh, meets its design life and beyond. In the North Sea and in the UK onshore operations, uh, we see assets that were designed for 25 to 30 years that are still up and running 25 years on, uh, sorry, 35, 40 years on uh, with good solid uh, fabric maintenance, operational maintenance, it's it's straightforward enough to get more life out of the asset. One of the big advantages, and that we speak to our clients a lot about this, is the requirement to protect steel in situ that is damp or is condensed, and in some cases wet or even below the water line. So the good thing with stopback is it's completely water tolerant. It can be applied subsea. Uh, it works in the, the fact it will displace the water from the steel and any water that's trapped is absorbed into the coating. So we, things like jetty piles, uh, risers and conductors offshore, splash zone areas, we use teams of divers and uh, for the subsea and the splash zone and then we carry on up into the atmospheric spaces. We can eliminate downtime because in a lot of cases speed is of the essence. 
we have applications, but our clients have only got so many weeks or days even to prep the surface and get the coating on before going back into operation again. With traditional coatings, uh, a lot of time there's multi visits to the to the steel uh, as the coating cures, as it needs to be inspected between coats, and just to ensure that the film builds are correct over the profile. Again, where space is confined, it's difficult to get in with blasting equipment, mechanical prep equipment. So it's easy enough for operators and contractors to get in to these confined spaces with a manual prep and get the, the substrate clean enough for the, the coating to go into. Uh, Stopak also has applications where we can apply to hot steel. Of course, uh, taking in, uh, into consideration the safety of the applicator, but we have had applications where uh, we've tested this at 120 degrees, where we've applied the, the Stopak wrapping band, as you can see in the photograph there, and then applied the outer wrap to that. Uh, as a side benefit to stop back, we see thermal insulation. So on a 120 degree pipe, we could drop that temperature down to just below 90 degrees once the two coats were in place. Next slide, Whitney, please. OK, I suppose I made an assumption here, assuming that everybody online knows what stop back is. Stopak was developed back in the 1940s in the Netherlands. Uh, primarily, there was a requirement for a material that would stop leaks for obvious reasons in the Netherlands, uh, structure, dams, water retention. So Stopak was developed to plug the holes and uh, stop any ingress of water. The base material in Stopak is Apollo isobutene, as it says there. Apollo isobutene, I discussed this a little bit yesterday at yesterday's webinar. It's a product normally manufactured by BASF that uh, is used in chewing gum. The reason is that uh, Apollo isobutene never actually hardens, so it keeps the product in a liquid state. The band you see being wrapped around that pipe is in fact a coating. It's just that it comes in a wrap. We've got one here. This is what you get when you buy a stop pack. You've got your material in, in, on the roll, cut to size and wrapped accordingly. We can do everything from 50 millimeter diameter pipes right up to large uh, 48 inch and beyond. Uh, there is no real limit to the diameter of pipe that stop pack can be wrapped on. Uh, the, the actual wrapping band itself will come in in, in widths and up to 300 millimetres for manual application. In today's world, we've now stepped into the world of robotics for certain offshore applications we're doing just now, where we can use 600 millimetre wide wrapping, uh, wrapping band uh, applied to steel tubulars. Some excellent results from that product being applied robotically. So why stop pack compared to conventional coatings? Stop pack is designed to do one thing, and that's to provide a barrier against oxygen and moisture and electrolytes to the surface of the steel. Without these elements being uh, able to get to the steel, then you cannot have corrosion. So we are providing what I would call a life asset wrap to the coating, so you'll get protection for the full life of the asset if it is applied properly. We run a training school up here in Aberdeen, and our, our clients are more than happy to send their contractors up here, uh, where my colleague Colin Fowlis runs a training programme. Just ensure that when the guys get to the asset, that they are familiar with the product and they know how to apply it properly. With that, we provide a 30 year guarantee of the product, but we expect in excess of 60 years once the coating's on. We have applications currently in Scotland where uh, they've been on now for nearly 17 years. Pipes as good as it was when it went on. 
clients, especially the corporations, but not just corporations and contractors, even OEMs, are all are all aware of the pressures uh, that they're under in regard to net zero objectives and waste reduction. So this ticks a lot of boxes in that area. And we're seeing clients like Shell, BP, uh, large pharmacy companies, uh, utility groups, all looking at this as a dis as a part of the decision making process on which coating and how they're going to surface prep the steel. But I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail later. Whitney, can I have the next one, please? OK, I apologize for those that were in yesterday, but I think it's a valid point. Paul is a beauty in the top right hand picture there. Uh, never cures, so that's why the coating is regarding as a, as a as a coating and not a not a wrapping band as such. Uh, it will flow into uh, all crevices. It actually prefers a smooth substrate rather than a profile substrate, but it will still work as equally effectively on a profile substrate. It just needs to be on that substrate a little bit longer uh, while it adheres prior to the pull off tests being carried out. We'll adhere to virtually all surfaces, non-coated or coated. Uh, we very rarely have to do a comparative test to ensure that there's no reaction between the, the stop pack uh, and the coating that it's going on to. The advantage of that is if we've got a combination of substrates such as steel and concrete, then we can have a continuous uh, coating specification from, from steel to the concrete. But again, just sticking on the all surfaces, one of the surfaces that stop back is very, very effective on is stainless steel, primarily because in the preparation stages, we don't have to remove the passive protection that's provided by stainless steel. So you're still getting advantage of your stainless steel coating, but the added advantage of having the stop back on top of the stainless steel. And again, I touch on that a little bit later. Because you've got a uh, hundred percent adhesion between the stop back and the substrate, there is no risk of under creep. So with traditional coatings often they'll get damaged. You know your cars that uh, when they get a scratch on them, the corrosion, the, the moisture will get in, it will crawl underneath the, the paint coating and it'll start to flake. So there's corrosion occurring that you can't see. With uh, stop back that doesn't occur. In fact, it has self-healing properties. It almost sounds religious, but uh, it, if it is damaged, as we can see in the bottom right hand side, it will warm. You'll see a little spot of stop pack coming through the, the outer wrap. That can be easily fixed. Just spread that out and another coat of wrapping band, outer wrap on, on top of that and the repairs carried out. Completely impervious to oxygen and water, so that's not going to get through to the surface. We're often asked by our clients especially clients with uh, an inspection requirement. How do we inspect on the How do we inspect underneath stop back? Well, the, the proper answer to that question is you don't. You don't have to inspect underneath stop back because nothing's going to happen. Uh, but for ease of mind, if, if you really, really want to, uh, then you can cut a, a small patch in the stop back, peel it back, prep, uh, the surface by removing it with a scraper and then carry out your UT or NDT to the surface just to ensure that you're not suffering from any corrosion. In all cases, it's a case of, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Repair carried out. We are seeing more clients that are saying, OK, fine, we know it works, so we won't run any inspection on this particular job. Once the coating's on, it should be left to do its job. I've mentioned we will give us with uh, trained applicators, we'll give a 30 year guarantee. And we would expect to see 60 to 70 years life of the coating on the steel. Typical applications just now is uh, we're seeing a lot of steel coming from shipyards across the globe uh, for various offshore and onshore projects that by the time it gets over here, and by the time it's looked at, and get ready for hookup and commissioning. We're seeing evidence of corrosion. 
This is particular in uh, marine environments and uh, such things as FPSOs. Uh, Stopac is absolutely ideal for uh, remediation of, of that steelwork and giving it the life it's expected to have. When we talk about minimum waste as well, uh, some that we, we come across a lot, and again, I'll touch on it in one of the later slides, is that in regard to using traditional surface preparation methods and coatings, we generate an awful lot of waste. Uh, recently, I was down at the uh, University of Manchester, where one of the, the lecturers down there was talking about the impact that corrosion has on the environment. And 27% uh, of greenhouse gases can be associated to corrosion and also the manufacture of steel to replace uh, corroded steel. So as corrosion professionals, I think we've all got a duty to look at how we can lower the waste and how we can also lower the carbon footprint. Some really, really good, uh, I would call them secondary benefits to Stop pack. One is very good product for electrical resistance and is used a lot in the electrical industry. Thermal insulation as well. Some of our clients have run tests to see how effective stop pack would be in a fire. Uh, so we can compete under certain classes of cementitious coatings where stop pack can be used to replace cementitious coatings. But that's limited to certain classifications. The nature of a product being so dense and uh, can be applied in layers, it's ideal for noise suppression. Well, the tests have been carried out uh, recently to show the reduction in decibels when stop, stop acts applied to pipework. It's amazing how many clients see this as a really important uh, benefit to this product. OK, Whitney, thanks. OK, I usually pass this over to Colin, our, our uh, stop back TA, who's based in Aberdeen here and runs a training school, but I've heard him talk about this enough, so I'll just touch on it. ST2, how do, how do we, we do that? There's various options. Uh, on the far left, on the left-hand side photograph, we use a, a scotch bright, which is basically like a scouring pad, and that's used just to remove loose and flaking corrosion and uh, back to a solid substrate. We, for any application of stop pack, we use isopropanol because it is the only solvent that leaves no residue at all. You are to use thinners to wipe down the surface. You, you do leave some residue and that would have an effect on the adhesion of the product. What you're seeing there is four adhesion tests. So how we do an adhesion test is by, once the surface is cleaned, we cut a small patch put the stop back on and peel it back. And if cohesion occurs and it splits, it, it, we can see that the good material is left on the, it, on the steel and we're ready to apply the coating. In pipework applications, uh, the majority is circumferential wrapping with stop back uh, just to achieve the tension and ensure that you get the adhesion across all the surfaces. Moving across there, you have other options as well. You can do with a wire brush, foam pads, or paper discs. And you can see the difference that the, as we go up through there, the, the, steam, the steel becomes uh, more like a mechanical prep, but perfectly fine for just the scotch bright pad, as we say. You can see somebody in the, in the other photograph just doing the pull-off test. And this is a good example of... Uh, if you've got 95% of the product remaining on the steel, we're ready to go. The bottom picture shows the same test being carried out in small bore stainless steel. Again, same type of preparation. Wipe down with isopropanol and your stainless steel still remains intact, so you've got double the protection. OK, next question, please. And then next slide, please. Can I skip that one? Whitney had a problem with the, let's move on to the next one. Okay, some examples here. So what does stop act look like? Uh, we can see in the, the left-hand side here, this is a fairly complex structure. It's a, it's a bridge structure, a, a refinery. 
And we've used a combination here of a surface tolerant coating for the for the nodes. You can see the black there. Uh, so that paint has been painted and all the tubular sections that meet at the nodes have been wrapped, straight wrapped in stop pack and then they'll be spiral wrapped uh, with the outer wrap. Big advantage here, we're in Scotland in this instance, where the weather window isn't great at the best of times. With Stopac, we have a lot more tolerance to environmentals. We still need to point, but uh, where we've got condensed lines, where we've got wet lines, we can change the specification and don't have to stop the job. Uh, and again, any exposure to the elements is eliminated, you know, so we're not waiting an inspector to come along and inspect the surface prep prior to putting the primer on. Uh, when it comes to coating, uh, stop at built its reputation in buried pipe. A lot of uh, activity in buried pipe in the Middle East for obvious reasons. And uh, here we see a typical buried pipe application. Uh, yeah, and in the picture below, this is an atmospheric application again in Scotland where the pipework has been wrapped in stopback CZ and now uh, to coat of white PVC. One of our earlier clients just wanted to use white there just to ensure uh, that there was no corrosion visible. So that, that was part of the inspection process. And to this day, there's, there is no corrosion visible. OK, Whitney, thanks. Next one. Right, uh, so this is a very arduous uh, health environment, middle of uh, the ocean. A lot of structures there could be renewables. Could be, in this case, this is a platform, could be an oil rig. Even down there where you see the divers, this is a jetty pile application. Jetty piles are notoriously difficult to get right. Uh, because you've got corrosion subsea, uh, corrosion in the splash zone and corrosion in the atmospherics. So we can again treat that using the same stop act material directly onto the substrate. But where we require mechanical damage, we can then provide a, a glass reinforced outer wrap that will cope with any impacts from debris or impacts from vessels that might be alongside the jetty or alongside the structure offshore. Uh, we have seen an interest in this type of application, again, for renewable wind towers, that it's almost impossible to use a traditional coating because the, the time that's got to be spent between coats and there's nowhere for the teams to stay. Uh, so unless they're, they're uh, accommodated on a vessel, they're normally having to go back to shore and then come back out. So it's a, it's a time intensive job to put a traditional coat in and also to achieve the environmentals that would be required. So we anticipate that normal paint solutions would tend to break down quicker than they should, whereas stop act can also give you that longevity, but also give you the mechanical protection that you require as well. OK, next one, please. Right, just quickly through there, probably won't mean an awful lot to anyone who's not familiar with, uh, with stop back the, the, the codes. But basically, we're looking at three types of wrapping band. We're looking at standard, which everything from minus 45 to 50 degrees. Then we go to the H, which is a slightly higher temperature, up to 70 degrees. And finally, the CZHT, which was up to 95, but with peaks up to 120 degrees centigrade. Uh, I touched on the, the condensed wet lines, so we have recently developed our condensed line material, and we now have a stopback WSH, which is a new improved product. Uh, temperature limitations similar to CZH, but really ideal for where you cannot get your pipes dry enough. Uh, for traditional methods. PVC is going to be uh, taken off the market in the next year or so, so we're looking at other outer wraps at the moment. 
safe and clean outer wraps that will uh, will do it equally as well as the PVC outer wrap would do. One thing to consider for again for the corrosion professionals that are in today is salt pack is an excellent solution for CUI. Now, CUI because it's surface tolerant to the steel work. Once it's on, your steel works protected. So if you're getting uh, any moisture into your insulation material, it's not going to break down your steel work below. Uh, we also have a product which is uh, a protective coating for the cladding. So if you're getting any cladding damage, people are walking over the cladding or you're getting uh, moisture ingress through the cladding, we have the alu clad, which is put on the outside. So we've got from the top of the CEO, uh, from the top of the insulation coatings right through to the surface of the steel pipe. We can provide long term solutions. So a lot of the groups in the, in the oil and gas renewables and in the uh, utilities are looking at this as a sustainable solution for CUI. Next, please, Whitney. OK, uh, this is a real just a summary of what I've been talking about. So. Good temperature range for most industries, minus 45 to 90 degrees C, with, the, as I said, the peaks at 120. That covers, I would probably say, about 90% of the, the pipework applications that we come across. There's some higher temperature ones that stop at just at this time can, can be applied to. Dry, wet or damp makes no difference to us. We'll give you a specification that uh, will work and we'll give you 30 years and beyond. Uh, I've covered the surface prep, so I don't need to do that again. One of the things that we uh, we can talk about uh, from an energy efficiency point of view, there's no power requirement. So uh, that's another way of reducing your, your carbon footprint. Uh, your, everything that you're doing is a manual application, normally from ropes as well. So there is a saving to be made for scaffolding. Uh, or containment. So these should all be taken into account when, when looking at the costings and the environmental impact of specifying the product. I think it says all this bottom right hand picture here, that's your toolkit. That's what you need. You've got your stop back. In this case, sheets cut to size. Don't necessarily have, don't necessarily have to be. Uh, they can just be cut off the roll while the applicators are there. But if we're doing a complex, say a bend, then it's it's easier to cut the, the, the sheets to size, take them up and apply them. So there's no risk of uh, falling to sea or contaminating waterways. Uh, the guys that go up can safely use the product that got there and come back down with the backing sheet of the, of the stop pack and the cardboard roll. That's the only waste that they actually have. Next one, Whitney. Yeah, we've discussed this confined spaces. We've got quite a lot of jobs and complex structures, but pipework run, running through in, in small confined spaces. Easy enough for the guys to get in there. As long as you've got room to uh, wrap the pipe. If not, we can do what we call a cigarette wrap on, on the smaller pipes. We don't need to spy, spiral wrap. All application can be formed in stop packs are very, very good at uh, fuel joints. So if you're looking at uh, how to extend life and be, be sure that whatever you're putting on the fuel joint, then stop pack uh, should be considered as part of your specification. OK, just moving on. Yeah, I touched on this. We can see this that uh, the pipe temperature there down the bottom left here, 94 degrees. Once the stop pack and the outer wrap supplied, that then becomes 74.6 degrees. Now, what, what does that actually mean? It may mean that the insulation, the thermal insulation that you needed to put on the pipe, if you were using a traditional coating, might no longer be required or might need to be a lesser specification. So your coating's actually acting as a as a form of lowering the outer surface temperature that the steelwork once the coating's applied. 
Top right shows here, this is why we've run, why we've got the training school up here in Aberdeen, that we've got complex geometry, sometimes it's a T-piece with flange. Uh, so we like to show the guys how to build, uh, how to build the stop back around these, around these areas. The actual stop back manual is very, very good. It gives a pictorial uh, step by step through the application. So a lot of our applicators, they treat that as a sort of Bible offshore and onshore for applying stop back. It can get really complicated as you start to go into Y joints, and X joints. We're often asked about flanges as well. What do we do at flanges? Well, we can encapsulate flanges or we can do what we, we can see here, where we just used a, a stop back around the, the, the joint. Uh, where there's a gap between the flange faces, we can use a filler and we can use paste to build up the the bolts. Then we wrap with a geo, uh, a geo uh, textile wrap prior to finally wrapping with stop pack and, and the, the black outer wrap. So your once your flange is sealed, that's it sealed for life. Next, please. OK. This is just a recap and why we're moving away from an industry that's notoriously bad at looking after the applicators uh, as health issues, as uh, waste issues. So we can see some of the problems that do exist with halves, also with the uh, inhalation of small particle debris that can cause risks in rate later life. The picture down the bottom in the middle there, I particularly like, it just shows the pile of waste that's created when blasting takes place. And it's not just a simple case of garnet in there. It could be red lead mixed in with the garnet, which makes waste disposal very, very difficult. Uh, we can see uh, the mining of garnet in the bottom left there again. Very intrusive on the environment. OK, and on, I'm just aware of the time here, so. OK, that, that's my uh, short, sharp tech bite on stopback for piping applications. Many other types of things we could have discussed. But in general, uh, you know, a product that is beginning to be taken very, very seriously by uh, asset owners now because of the pressures that they're under for longevity, for performance and also for environment. So if there's any questions, I'm quite happy to answer them. But, um, don't want to hold you guys up too long. Whitney, any questions coming in on the chat? Um, I don't see any questions um, coming in on the chat. Um, I did want to ask um, one question I thought maybe people might be wondering about yeah. is, um, can I patch repair pipe work with stop pack? And if so, what's the procedure there? OK, yeah, uh, that is actually a really good question. Stop pack on pipe work. The, the physics of the stop back is that it does prefer to be circumferentially wrapped just so we have tension in the system and so we get full adhesion to the pipe. So uh, we would carry out the repair and we would wrap the pipe for the, for the width of the patch that you're trying to achieve, plus probably 100 millimetres each side, and then finish off with the outer wrap, leaving a small amount of stop back three millimetres showing at either side. That would be a normal repair. But you can patch repair as well. We do a lot of patch repair work for atmospheric and buried pipe, where uh, we'll expose this, what we call a scab or uh, an area of damage, and we will cut the patch. Uh, we normally use a base coat uh, because it doesn't need to be circumferentially wrapped, and then we can paint directly on top of the base coat. That way you're getting your, your protection both from uh, onto the steel with the stop pack and from the environment uh, using the, the top coat. We also have a product within our range 
uh, which has shown a great deal of interest from our colleagues in Easy Court, part of Stopback family, where we use uh, what we call self cleaning patches. Now, these are ideal. I think using renewables is a good example where you've got well joints on a structure that the rope access guys can just manually prep and they, they use the self cleaning patches around the damaged areas. Uh, and as they say, that's what they do. It's, a, it's, it's cut to size, same prep that I spoke about earlier, and the patch is applied. Uh, so any well joint crevices, blind faces, where steel on steel applications, the self cleaning patches are ideal. OK. Anyone I else see questions? Ralph is um, typing. He might be adding in um, a question here for us, Stuart. Um, OK. While we're waiting for Ralph to um, have his, his comment come through, um, I just thought of another thing while you were talking. Um, people might also be wondering if they can use stop pack to encapsulate phalanges to stop them from corroding. Is that possible? Yeah, I touched on that in the presentation there that uh, some of our clients prefer to take the stop pack up to the flange and just leave the flange exposed. Uh, some may just use stop pack. Uh, on the interface between the flanges. Uh, so they may use some filler and then a piece of stop back around circumferentially to stop any moisture ingress over time. They're protecting the, the bolts and the, the flange faces themselves. But yes, we can encapsulate and, and for buried pipe work, etc. Obviously, that, that, that's where the big encapsulation of flanges and uh, components can be done. OK, great. Thank you for that. No problem. Oh, seems like Ralph didn't have a question. He had a comment. Thank you for that. Yes, no lots of good uh, information today. Yeah, well, I appreciate everybody coming online. Uh, it's good to, you know, pass over the information. It's, it's something that we should all be considering when we're looking at steel protection. It's a clean, safe way to move forward. So I'm back online on, on Thursday. Uh, I'm, I'll be covering the, the, the green impacts of, of Stallpack and, and why with the, the challenge we face in, in regard to greenhouse gases, emissions, etc. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. But once again, thanks to everybody for calling today and if I don't see you all soon, uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Okay, bye for now.